Grace and peace to you in the name of the risen Christ. Good morning, Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ. What a joy to welcome you as we come to worship this morning, a joy to see your smiling faces and the joy that lives within your spirit. I pray that as we continue to worship, that joy might continue to grow and nourish your body and your soul. Welcome to each and every one of you. And if you are with us for the first time, we are excited to have you here. Um, We would love to meet you back in the Ministry and Visitor Center as you pass by, as you came in. We'd love to give you a gift. We'd love to say hi and help you get more connected to this beautiful community. We also want to extend a very, very special welcome to all those who are worshiping online with us this morning. We have folks from all over the world. In fact, at last count, nearly 110 countries tune in to Cathedral of Hope uh, on Sundays for worship and on Wednesdays, and more than 70,000 people uh, gather at Cathedral of Hope wherever they are around the world. So Cathedral of Hope, let's welcome all those who are worshiping online with us today. And we wanted to remind you that here we go by liturgical colors and not sports calendars. This is true. So I'm just the green. I get it. I've heard. Um, but it's, it's, it's ordinary time. It's green time. It's so, green time. It yeah. is. It okay. has nothing to do with this afternoon's football game. No, not at all. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing Nothing at all to do. Announcements. So if you would like to get more involved in the leadership of the church, um, it's a wonderful wonderful ministry. I mean, I think sometimes we gloss over some of the um, ministries that involve committees and meetings, but they are critical and essential to the inner workings of our church. We want your input. We want your passion. We want those of you who want to plug in and get more involved. Um, we'd love to have you be a part of it. In the, in the first page, page seven um, of the news, uh, in the weekly, um, we have the Board of Stewards Standing Committee recruiting and Board of Stewards applications are going to be coming out soon. So we would love it if you would prayerfully consider being a part of the leadership of Cathedral of Hope. You'll also know that here at Cathedral of Hope, we find ways in which we connect beyond just the walls of the church uh, in community, and there are two opportunities coming up for you. Uh, First of all, again, on page seven of your weekly, you'll find the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime. I have absolutely no idea what that's about, Uh, but you can join others who will find out. It's at the ATT uh, um, Theater, and uh, we're uh, selling tickets today. And also, on February the 9th, uh, they are gathering again for Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Now, I do know what that's about, (laughs) Uh, so um, that's at 7.30. Get your tickets today. You'll find out more information. And uh, one of the great things about our connecting together, especially with AT&T, um, is that uh, when our group gets to the theater, we are usually provided our own room so that we can actually connect with one another and then enter into the theater together. So uh, you can see um, more information about that in your weekly today. And if you'll notice also on page eight there, Women's Council, woohoo, are sponsoring two events. We're going to start sponsoring many, many more things. We're doing exciting and wonderful work in the midst of our community. The first is an opportunity for community care. And what that is, is the Genesis um, Women's Shelter and Support Group. There are ways in which you can walk alongside women who have been in abusive situations, who are seeking legal help. Um, There's ways in which for you to be trained to help them out. If you have time during the week to do that, we'd love to have you. The training information is here and signing up is here. And also, at the end of January, on the last Sunday, on the last um, weekend, we are going to be having Having, um, a consensus-oriented decision-making seminar. It's the last Saturday, and we would love to have you. If you are part of a standing board, a, a committee, if you do group work or um, work in large kind of gatherings where you are in your work or even at church, this is a great model for how to build consensus and have decision-making that's healthy and makes everyone feel like their voice is heard and included. And so we have a wonderful um, facilitator for that training. She is professional, and you're welcome to come. All the information is on page eight. Also on page eight is our membership class. Please sign up for that. Also, uh, most of you know that we have a daily devotional here at Cathedral of Hope that is sent out uh, every single day to your inbox uh, if you've signed up for it. If you haven't, I uh, want to invite you to do that. Uh, but also, uh, our denomination, the United Church of Christ, also has a daily devotion that goes out from a group called the Still Speaking Writers Group. Uh, they're actually going to be here at Cathedral of Hope uh, the week of uh, the 24th of January. And on the 24th, uh, you're invited to an open conversation with them. Uh, it will be here at 7 
7 o'clock in the evening, and you can find out much more information about that um, on uh, page 7 of the weekly. Today, we're also selling Girl Scout cookies. Um, I know you're all excited now. Um, at after service. After, yes, it does. after service. You might be hungry now, but after service. It does not replace communion. No. Um, it does not replace communion. Milk and cookie. No. Mm -mm. But they are on sale in the uh, fellowship hall directly after worship. And um, I don't know how many of you know it, but Neil, shockingly, is going to be honored. I know. I know. This guy. But he is going to be honored at Temple Shalom, and we are very, very excited for this partnership, this continued investment Cathedral of Hope is in making in the wider community, faith community. And today, um, today we have, um, uh, sorry, we have um, Scott Butnick and his family is here. I don't know where. Right. Yay! And you're going to come on up and give us some information about that wonderful, wonderful celebration that we're going to have and your community. Um, thank you so much. So come on up. Come on up. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I want to thank everybody here at the uh, Cathedral of Hope and your congregation for what is truly a humbling opportunity today. Temple Shalom is a Reformed Jewish congregation in North Dallas. The men's auxiliary, known as Temple Shalom Brotherhood, will celebrate our 50th anniversary next year. The Brotherhood, for the last 10 years, has recognized individuals who engage in acts of tikkun olam, which is Hebrew for repairing the world. Repairing those elements of our community that have become broken. Leaders who demonstrate such qualities earn the Shalom Award. This year, the tragedy at the Pulse nightclub in Orlando weighed heavily on our minds as we were deciding on an honoree. Could we, in fact, bring some healing out of something so evil? Our senior rabbi, Andrew Paley, advised us, without hesitation, yes, you can. Honor Reverend Dr. Neil Cazares Thomas from the Cathedral of Hope. Rabbi Paley regrets he can't be here today. He's busy teaching. But he asked me to share this message with you. To our LGBTQ, Muslim, Latino, African-American brothers and sisters, as well as all those of all political ideologies and those in our community who feel left out, scared, or worried about being different. We want you to know we care. And you have a friend and a partner in Temple Shalom as we work together to create the world of safety, of justice, of compassion, and most of all, to deliver the greatest promise of our Creator, the promise of shalom, peace for ourselves, our families, and our communities. And so I ask you today to come celebrate with us your very own Reverend Cazares Thomas, our Reverend Cazares Thomas, 5.30 Sunday afternoon, February 26th, at the Intercontinental Dallas Hotel on the Tollway. Details on obtaining tickets will be distributed through the church hierarchy. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you so much. So it is in that hope of building bridges, one with the other, across denominations and across walks of faith that we gather here at Cathedral of Hope this day. Let's now share that shalom, that peace, that hope as we come to worship. God bless you.
let us pray. Parent, divine God, we come to you this morning seeking a word from your beautiful and precious spirit. May she work in all of our hearts, in all of our lives this morning. May we leave not the same. May we be changed in our understanding of how we connect with you and how we connect with others. Amen. Amen. Our epistle lesson is from the second chapter of Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. Hear these words. As it is written, what no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the human heart conceived, what God has prepared for those who love God. These things God has revealed to us through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what human being knows what is truly human except the human spirit that is within? So also, no one comprehends what is truly God's except the spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from God, so that we may understand the gifts bestowed on us by God. And we speak of these things in words not taught by human wisdom, but taught by the spirit, interpreting spiritual things to those who are spiritual. May God bless the hearing of these ancient words. Amen. This weekend, we celebrate and remember the life and work of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. In a world that is so divided along so many different lines, in so many different ways, we remember this man as one who raised his voice and allowed his life to transform not just the African-American experience in America, 
but the experience of us all. And so today, as we come together for worship, we remember his life, not as a saint necessarily, but as someone who can show us the way. So I invite you to join with me as we pray this morning. I invite you into a quiet time, a time for spoken and silent contemplation in the words called to us by Wayne B. Arneson. Let us pray. Spirit of life, we have come into each other's presence this day, seeking a part of ourselves, knowing that we do not live alone, and knowing we cannot live fully if we are for ourselves alone. We gather in thanks for the life and ministry of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., not because we wish to worship him as a saint, but because we wish to embody his dream as a possibility we make real. We gather with full knowledge of our shortcomings, our lives set before us many tasks, and often we are not equal to them. We fall short of our own expectations. We find we do not know enough. We are not always patient. We fall into anger, we cannot find the strength, we lack vision, and we wait in vain for wisdom. It is painful to acknowledge our shortcomings, yet we are here, Spirit of life. We are here not always perfect, not always wise, not always just, but wonderfully and mysteriously human and alive. We dedicate this time together to renewing our hope. May the stories we share give us courage. May the songs we sing give us hope. May the words we speak give us wisdom. And most of all, may the touch of hands, the sight of faces, the sound of voices lifted in song and affirmation restore in us faith that this world may be made whole with all of its people one. I have a dream, and we are called to live it out. And the people of God, we said, Amen.
God be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the reign of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. While walking along the Sea of Galilee, Jesus saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed Jesus. Going a little further, Jesus saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in the boat mending the nets. Immediately Jesus called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired help and went off in the company of Jesus. This is the gospel of hope. invite you to be seated and also invite you to open your hearts and your minds as we ask the God that is still speaking to speak with us this day through the interpretation of this scripture. Let us pray together. Amazing and beloved one, thank you for your presence amongst us this day. Thank you for calling us, shaping us, naming us, and giving us purpose as we gather in this space. So anoint us, O God, by your Holy Spirit, so that through that same Spirit that was at the beginning of all time and continues to reveal new things this day, reveal new things to us, and that we might follow in your footsteps. And so, Almighty One, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day, and may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts May they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus the Christ we pray, amen. Those of you who are regular attenders and friends and members of this congregation will know that we're in the midst of a sermon series that actually will take us all the way through the end of February. This particular sermon series is called Time to Shift. And we have to say that very clearly, (laughs) Time to Shift. And then next month is called Shift Shift happens. Perhaps next month we have to say it even clearer uh, with an even better British accent than I still have. It's a time for us as we begin this new year to think about the purpose and meaning not only of our own lives but of the purpose and meaning of what Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ has been called to to think about how we as a community have transformed and changed throughout time and that that God who is still speaking continues to change us and renew new things about us as people who are on the journey, people who are on the way, people who are following in the footsteps of the one that we call Jesus. This particular sermon series at this particular time of the year is a time when many of us have been thinking about new commitments to our own lives and new commitments to what it means to be someone who is a person of faith. This particular season of the time reminds us always that we are a people who are changing, that constantly we are in those moments of change, whether we enjoy change or whether we do not like change. We are a people who are being transformed. It is the essence of the gospel of good news. 
that we are a people who are constantly in moments of change and transformation, and that we should not only expect transformation, but get excited about transformation. That the deepening of our own relationship with the one that we call God, with our higher power, with the power of the universe, is the one who calls us always to go deeper and to find new meaning in our lives. It is one of the great things that excites me about Christianity, that it is not so much a religion, but a lifestyle choice. So often I have been told that my lifestyle choice is not a good one. I'm delighted that my lifestyle choice is one that is following in the footsteps of the one we call Jesus. That that lifestyle choice is one that embeds itself deep within our own bodies. And that this lifestyle choice of being a follower on the way is one that calls us always to a greater and higher standard of our own humanity. It is the spiritual journey of a lifetime and would call us always to higher and deeper and greater things than the one that we even worship called Jesus. It is that gospel commandment that reminds us that unless we are transforming, unless we are changing, that we might never know the fullness of what eternity might look like. Transformation. It is that journey that Jesus called his disciples to on that day that he was walking along the seashore and seeing those who had just returned from fishing from a night of hard work. And Jesus who calls them and says, come, follow me. I, I like Mark's gospel because in some ways I think that Mark is a bit like me. Mark is a type A personality who has no time for the details, <laughs> but rather who wants to set the course and the vision and just says, come, follow me. Immediately, Scripture says, they got up from their nets and they followed Jesus. They weren't concerned about what happened to their boat. They didn't seem concerned about what happened to their nets. They didn't even seem concerned for the hired hands who were left with all of this property. Mark says that they got up and immediately followed Jesus, for there was something compelling about him and the message that had them on fire. The Christian church needs to rekindle that sense of urgency and that sense of passion and that sense of commitment to be the ones who would follow and to find the excitement of this gospel of good news that would energize us and call us always to go deeper and further in our faith than we perhaps have thus far. That's why shift happens around this place, is because we are consenting one with the other to go deeper and to find new meaning and purpose in our lives as the followers of the one called Jesus and to follow in those footsteps so that our lives might have purpose and might have meaning. Those disciples certainly knew that that was what they were being called to, even though they may not have known right at the very beginning what was set out on their journey. They were willing to follow and to learn and to find that within them. Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ, we are a people who are called to connect not only to the one who we call God, but we are also called to connect to God's people. And therein lies the problem. Many of us don't have problems connecting with God. It's easy to connect with God. God doesn't talk back. <laughs> or, or perhaps she does. God, God is the one that we can often create and recreate in our own image, and yet the Scripture reminds us that we are not called to create God in our image, but we are called to create ourselves in the likeness of God. And so the God who welcomes to us this morning calls us to connect not only to this way, but to connect that way, to connect with one another to connect in ways that we might see the diversity of God's expression here on earth, to connect with one another so that we might also go deeper and further in our relationships with one another. And let's be honest, whilst most people are not afraid of the connection with God, many people today are frightened of their connection with God's people. Do I hear an amen this morning? Not here at Cathedral of Hope, of course. 
But the reality is that many of those who call themselves Christians, of those who call themselves the followers of Jesus, no longer represent who Jesus is or was, but have rather created a God in their own image, a God that supports their idealism, a God that supports their political agenda, a God who supports their passions, a God that supports their dreams. And yet, this God that we believe in is a God who invites us to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. A Jesus who was always on the side of the oppressed. A Jesus who was always on the side of the marginalized. A Jesus who would confront the religious right of his own time. And a Jesus who invited them not just to have a religion of the head, but a religion of the heart to find deep within their bodies and their souls, to go beyond their humanity and to find their spirituality, a spirituality that would call them from the depths of their bodies. Remember, church, Jesus never came to find a new religion. Jesus came to reconnect God's people with the sense of what the divine was doing and the divine's purpose in the world. And as people of faith, regardless of whether we call ourselves faithful United Church of Christ members or just followers or curious members, we too have been called this day to connect with one another and to reconnect with the divine's purpose in this world, to do that important work of healing the world that was shared with us at the beginning of worship. And repairing the world, I believe, means that we are also called to repair relationship with one another. And that to live out the ways of Jesus is to be a people of compassion and kindness and forgiveness. I believe the church would be a very different place today if the people of God would just accept that we are called to be people of compassion, kindness, and forgiveness that we are called not to be a people who are divided, but a people who are united. A people who are united not along race or gender or sexual orientation, but a people who are united because we absorb the values of Jesus and we have been called to a lifestyle choice that would enable Jesus to be made real in us. That we have been called, sisters and brothers, to forgive one another, to love one another, and to find ways in which we can move beyond our human dissension to a spiritual consent that enables us to stay in relationship with one another. This week, we will have that opportunity to stay in relationship with one another. As many of us know, we will receive our new president this week, and regardless of our own philosophies, political alliances, or strategies, we are called to love one another as God has loved us. And not to use this opportunity to continue the deep, deep divisions that exist within our country right now. Hard work, never easy. But who said that Jesus promised us a rose garden? <laughs> Jesus invited us to live in a world where the weeds and the good flowers would grow together and not to be afraid of that growing together and allow God to do what God does best and to sort us out at the end of time. If we truly believe that the Holy Spirit is within us and continues to bless us, then we must acknowledge that the Spirit will work in different ways in different peoples, and that our job as communities of faith is not to judge one another. God does that. The church does that enough. But rather, we are called simply to love one another as God has loved us. It is that that will connect us as sisters and brothers. And perhaps even at this time, the greater challenge for us is to sit with one another and to hear our stories, to hear our differences, to embrace one another, and to find ways in which we can continue to grow together and repair this world. 
Perhaps that is what God is calling Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ to do in the midst of this moment for such a time as this. God has a wicked sense of humor sometimes. But the joy of learning and listening to spirit of the Jesus who said to those early fishermen, come follow me, was that we would dare, perhaps even be double dared, to step out onto the water and walk, to live in fullness with one another, and to allow the spirit to change our hearts and our minds and our future. It is not easy work, but it is the work that Jesus called those early disciples to, and it is the work that we are also being called to as we cross those borders and boundaries and those comfortable places that we often find ourselves in, to cross beyond what seems impossible and to acknowledge that all things are possible if we would but have faith and believe. I sincerely pray, sisters and brothers, that we would find ways in which we could connect with one another. We have people in this congregation of many different varieties, both politically and in their own choices of life. But even we have been able to find ways in which we might stay together, even in the midst of sometimes disagreeing with one another. We have found that possible because we hold on to the values of our faith, those values that inspire us as they inspired those disciples, those values that remind us of the life that we are on and the journey we have consented to follow. And if we but could hold on to those great promises of the Great Commission, of the great example of Jesus more than 2,000 years ago, I know that not only will we go through it together, but we will excel together. We will excel. I truly believe that we will be a different community because we consented one to the other to live in harmony and peace not saying that we don't confront some difficult decisions that may be made over these next few years together, but we confront them from the values of Jesus, not because of our political persuasion. We confront them because we believe in equality and justice for all, and that does not mean just some. That means all. That is what Jesus calls us to do and is what Jesus commands us this day as we connect with one another, as we follow in the footsteps of the one we call Jesus, as we follow in the footsteps of the great prophets of the past, of Moses, of Muhammad, of Gandhi, and others that we could name here in this space. We are called as disciples this day not to be afraid of our connections. And when we disagree, not to judge one another, not to dismiss one another, not to believe that somehow I'm more right than someone else or perhaps even more left than someone else. I love that. I've been known to say the religious right is neither religious or right, <laughs> but rather to find the way of Jesus, the road less traveled, that traveling road that many have not yet chosen to go on. May we choose that today. And in this time of shift as a congregation, do the hard work, personal inventory of going deeper and more sincerely, not just as human beings, but as spiritual people who are on the way to finding the promised land. May it be so, Cathedral of Hope. It's time to shift. God bless you this morning. Amen.
So we double dog dare you, apparently, to shift, to change, to be a part of this wonderful community. Um, this is the part where we connect with you. Um, there should be red pads at the end of the pews. We would love to have you sign in, tell us a little bit about yourself, um, introduce yourself, write down prayer requests. This is the time where we get to connect with you. We look at all of them, we see all of them, and we are so grateful you are here. Uh, this week, as I saw the passage we were reading today from the Gospel of Mark, it reminded me of a time in seminary where I, I couldn't quite understand why all of these grown adult men would just sort of follow Jesus, like, whoa, all right. Um, Maybe it's because I feel tied to things, and I can't imagine just hearing a call and just leaving everything I own, everything I know, my family. And there was, a sem there was a professor in seminary who gave me an interesting take on it, and he said, well, what you need to understand about the first century is that most young boys wanted to be rabbis, or at least to follow a rabbi in some way. And... So actually, if you come to a grown adult in that community and they are fishing or they are tax collectors or they are doing something else, it probably wasn't their first choice. And the reality is that they, they probably in their heart wanted to have a passionate religious following experience, but no rabbi had chosen them. And so I wonder if maybe this beautiful, passionate following we have of these disciples is not just because Jesus was compelling, although I believe he probably was, but it was because somehow Jesus knew the hearts of these men who were in all other ways maybe misfits, maybe marginalized, maybe outsiders. They certainly weren't insiders. And Jesus chose the people that were chosen by no one else. He chose the outsider, the marginalized, the one who wasn't chosen to start this beautiful revolution. And so it made me think of our community. It made me think of so many communities in this country and in this world who would love a chance to experience the beautiful and passionate worship where we call you included, we call you apart. And so I wonder if we are the start of that beautiful revolution here at, at Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ, that we, having understood, you know, so often when we preach and, and we hear about the gospel, it is taking it to the marginalized, that God cares about the least. Well, oftentimes, my friends, the best messenger of that is people who've experienced that. It's people who understand that. We are the ones, and, and Reverend Neal is so right, this is the time. For such a time as this, Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ, we are here to bring this revolutionary gospel into being, into truth, into light. And so my prayer is that as you continue to support Cathedral of Hope in the many ways that you do it with your time and your talents, you will also consider supporting us with your finances. This is the time where we receive our tithes and offerings, and my prayer is, beautiful community, that you would put in your financial support to support and be a part of this revolutionary journey we are all on. God bless you.
And so now we prepare ourselves and our hearts and our minds for this act of Eucharist, communion, Lord's Supper, breaking of the bread. We remember how on the night Jesus was to be taken from us, he took bread from that table. He gave you thanks and praise, blessed it, broke it, passed it around to each and every one of them and said to them, take and eat of this, all of you, for this represents the brokenness of life, the brokenness of relationships, the brokenness of the world. And it was in this invitation that Jesus said, through the brokenness, I invite you to do the hard work of healing the world, healing relationships, healing the brokenhearted, of doing that hard work together. For when we do that together, we remember Him. In like fashion, He took from the table a cup he again gave you thanks and praise and blessed it, and he again passed it around to each and every one of them, and he said to them, into this cup is filled my love. For, for you cannot do this work alone, but you can do it if you allow the love to be poured out of me and into you. Receive of this cup and allow this cup to sustain you in the good days and the bad days the good times and the hard times, and allow this grace, this love to flow through you so passionately, so real, that it would inspire you onwards and upwards. Receive of this, Jesus said, and when you do so, remember me. Let us pray. Almighty God, Send the power of your beautiful Holy Spirit upon us, all of us gathered here, and on these gifts of grape and grain. Make them be for us holy food that nurtures us in body and spirit, that by sharing this feast we may know the presence of the living Christ. By your Spirit, O oh God, make us one with Christ, one with each other in healing and whole relationships, and one in ministry to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Come expecting Jesus to meet you. I'm expecting to see sweet mercy and pure grace when we eat this bread and drink this wine it will be a holy moment in time so come expecting Jesus
Holy One, we thank you for once again meeting us at your table of grace. As we leave this place and connect with others, may we be shining examples of your love to the world. Amen. Before I give the final benediction, um, I was a personal, just a moment of personal privilege. I have a friend here at church this morning who I've not seen in many, many years, uh, who is visiting from Los Angeles, now living in Palm Springs. And Kerry and I served in Los Angeles. Kerry was the a cantor at our nine o'clock service for many, many years, and we sang in the Gay Men's Chorus of Los Angeles together. In fact, they would always put us together because we were the troublemakers on the back row. <laughs> And uh, Kerry, it just warms my heart to see you. I haven't seen you since you were pretty ill. And you look absolutely amazing this morning. And I am so grateful for your presence here. Please welcome Kerry amongst us today. <laughs> Most of you know I'm very British and so I have two tears that get recycled every year as I was watching him through worship, uh, those two tears kept recycling. So, And so unto God's gracious mercy and protection, each and every one of us is given. And the blessing of God, known to us this morning as Creator, Savior, and Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Amen.